today we're going to be looking at the TIOC 2.0 PTZ. Now, back in the 26th of June 2020 is when we launched the actual TIOC static cameras, and they've been nothing but a roaring success. Now we have a PTZ. Now the TIOC PTZ is the new 2.0 version. Now we also have other cameras coming out which will be the bullet and turret both in 8 and 5 megapixels. They will also be a TIOC 2.0 and for the static cameras they will now be deployed with the new smart motion detection 3.0. Okay, let's take a look at the actual design of the camera. So as you can see from the front, there are many different illuminators. We have infrared light, white light, and the traditional red and blue light as well for your active deterrent. Okay, let's talk about the actual camera sensor. So the camera is four megapixels and it has 25 times zoom as well as digital zoom just to be able to go that little bit further as well. But one of the mind blowing aspects is PFA, predictive focus algorithm. That's whenever the camera will zoom in and then of course it will focus at exactly the same time. Yesterday, whenever I was going between many different presets, normally in a normal circumstance, the camera would go out of focus and then focus up when it gets to its point. In this case here, the camera was in focus the whole duration and I went from long to short range to far to short and of course in this case here it was perfect at all times. PFA I won't go for another camera now without PFA because I just believe it's a true asset to pan tilt and zoom. Now as you can see the actual camera has a external siren that you can use for two-way speech as well but you will need a external microphone. Now of course the siren is of a loud quality you can easily hear that even whenever the actual camera is at elevated height I have a couple of videos on that and of course the camera also comes with alarm input and output the alarm input for this PTZ this time can also be used as a physical switch for the disarming feature you can use your mobile phone to disarm your camera you can use a physical switch to disarm your camera also Okay, now let's talk about the actual features of the TIOC PTZ. Now, one of the key elements is smart illumination. That's where we work together with infrared light and white light, and then of course, if necessary, the red and blue active deterrent light. So what we use in smart illumination is we have a monitoring area. Now, if someone was to come into the monitoring area, then it would turn from infrared light to white light and it illuminates the whole scene. In the event that they were to break one of the event analytics, like tripwire or trusion, then of course the actual red and blue and siren will trigger to of course obviously push that person away, to move them on. So of course the actual smart illumination is working together with infrared and white light. The problems with infrared is that you know you can't even confirm the color of somebody's clothing. So of course we don't want to go back to that. We want to have a illuminated scene. We can see the person or the object within the field of view and if necessary we activate that red and blue and siren. Now, working with SMD 3.0 Smart Motion Detection, we have improved algorithms to reduce the false alarm rate. We can set the actual camera to monitor motor vehicle or human, and then of course while doing this, then of course we can reduce the false alarm rate upwards of 98%. We never want to go back to that factor of having video motion detection. As far as the industry is concerned, that's almost dead now. So of course, by using smart motion detection, we've get accurate push notifications, accurate filtering, and accurate playback. It is a key element to this PTZ. Now we also have IVS, Intelligent Video System. Now let's not forget, when it comes down to active deterrent, TIOC, PTZ TIOC, then of course we can use the smart motion detection and the IVS at exactly the same time. There's not an awful lot of cameras that can do that. Now, for our IVS, the intelligent video system, then of course we have good old fashioned tripwire and intrusion, but this time we have object filtering. So of course tripwire and intrusion will only trigger in the event of a motor vehicle or a human crossing the analytic line. We also have a couple of other features which is missing and abandoned object and whenever I tested these, even when the camera was at height, I had excellent accuracy. 
Now the camera also comes with face detection, which is a very powerful asset whenever installed externally, looking between like public space awareness, for example. Now the good thing with face detection in the actual camera is the face enhancements. When you click on face enhancements, you can go down to the actual filter and you can select various different uh, methods of capture. You can say like take multiple cam captures and then of course compare the better one, which I think is called face priority, or you can in fact actually just snap, snap, snap at all of the actual faces seen. When you do the actual face detection and then of course you relay that to a network video recorder, you can collect an awful lot of useful data needed. Auto tracking, major benefit to a PTZ like this. Whenever we have unmanned, unguarded solutions, then of course what we can do is we can activate our auto tracking feature and if a motor vehicle or human were to come in the field of view, then of course the camera will in fact actually follow that person or an object anywhere up to 300 seconds and then of course if you did have that type of scenario where you needed to be kept something in view then of course the actual camera will do all of the work for us it's extremely fast we had a couple of cars go past it at speed it immediately tapped onto that motor vehicle and then of course followed them until they left the field of view it is an absolutely key benefit to any ptz Okay, let's continue to look around the camera. So, I'm going to click on settings, top right corner here. And of course, under the actual conditions, this looks like a regular PTZ to me, but of course, obviously, we have Illuminator. Now, you can actually see that it's on smart illumination, which means that it's going to use the infrared light, and then, of course, warm light whenever somebody enters the field of view, and then, of course, red and blue if necessary. However, though, we also have a couple of other features. We could actually just activate the IR mode, which means the camera will always remain in grayscale or monochrome. However, of course, obviously, if anybody enters the field of view and trips a target, then, of course, it will flash red and blue, but it will stay in IR mode. And of course then we actually have white light mode, so that's when we actually have the lights turned on, they will stay on for the full duration. Okay, and now let's take a look at event. So if I go into event, then of course we have the traditional VMD video motion detection, but most importantly we have smart motion detection. And as you can see, I can filter between human and motor vehicle. Whenever I visit into the smart plan, then of course I can look at all of my other features the camera can do. As you can see, this camera has the ability of face detection, deep IVS, intelligent video system, and also video metadata. Okay, now I'm going to use deep IVS on this particular camera, so I'm going to go into deep IVS, save that, into IVS, and then of course, as you can see, it is completely packed full of features. So tripwire, intrusion, ab abandoned object, fast moving object, missing object, loitering detection. This camera has a lot of IVS features. And of course, obviously, the most important one, disarming. Okay, so of course, like in not all circumstances do everybody want red and blue lights and sirens flashing at them. So as you can see here, we can disarm the actual PTZ. We can also use a physical contact from the alarm input to disarm the actual PTZ as well as. However, though, when we do, we will be shutting down the relay control, sending email, audio linkage, and the warning lights. None of those will operate when the device is disarmed. Okay then, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to activate the actual IVS and I already have auto tracking enabled. So if I do that in here, then I guess Colin will be the target. Okay, yep. Okay. There you go, tracking. Now, let's talk about these illuminators on the front of the PTZ, since they are a key asset to this particular model. Now, let's focus on the white light, which are the middle ones. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn these on. Okay, and of course we are at 50% strength at the moment. I'm just going to reduce that down to 1%. As you can see that they're quite dim. Now let's not forget that at 1% illumination in a complete pitch black environment, then of course it will probably be enough to create a full color image. However though, if not, then of course we can ramp this up, so up to 50 odd percent or so. And then of course, maximum. Now that is quite bright, okay? Even in here bar behind these lights, that's quite bright to me. Now let's take a look at the infrared light. So I'm going to change that into 
IR mode. Save that. Go into my day and night and turn that into black and white. Save that. Go into my illuminator. Go into manual. Press on save. I think you should see a glow on the actual camera. So of course, like they're, they're both actual IR illuminators. This one is our IR illuminator and so is the one down from it as well. The warm light illuminator shares the same component for infrared light as well. And of course, by using this, we can actually control the strength. I think on the actual camera there that if I reduce this down to 50% or so on both of them and save that, I'm not sure, but I think you might actually see a small bit of IR illumination on both sets of lenses. Okay, so of course, in this case here, effectively, you actually have four IR illuminators on the front of this PTZ. Okay, now what I'll do is I'll show you the red and blue lights. Now, I'm going to activate video motion detection, which means that something in this room is going to trigger it immediately. But then, of course, that would be good enough so we can see what's happening. I'm going to change the flicker speed into slow to start, so into a low setting, click on that, and then column maybe if you move about a bit, there you go, good enough, medium, okay, good, I'll change it now into high, oh yeah, that was a good one, I like that one, I think that one's great, okay, so of course, on the actual red and blue, then of course we can actually use low, medium, and then, of course, obviously, the high-frequency flicker as well. So while we're under the PTZ features, then, of course, let's just take a look. So first of all, if I double-click here, then, of course, we already have preset 1 set up. I can, of course, obviously move this to a different area. Let's get a little bit of zoom in there as well. And, of course, I can save that. Okay, so now we have preset 1, preset 2. We can also do a tour where we in fact actually go through all of our presets or we could do a scan where what I can do is I can limit our left to the right actions. The better one is pattern though because if I do this one and I start recording and I move left, right, up, down, zoom in, zoom out. Then, of course, the good thing is whenever I've actually done that, I can press on stop record. And, of course, if I press start now, it actually relay that whole pattern back to me. There we go. Everything that I just did, now playing back. That's kind of cool. Okay. Stop that there. Key features to a SD6 PTZ, we also have the elements of idle motion. So of course, what happens if you don't do something for a certain period of time. So my idle motion is set to 10 minutes to default to preset one. In the event of power failure, and of course the camera boots up, I can then also determine where it will look upon a power being restored. In this case here, on my power up, it will also look at preset one. I also have the abilities of time tasks also, where I can tell it to do a certain job at a certain time of the day to in fact actually correspond to my site or application where the PTZ is based. Don't forget to like, hit the bell and subscribe for even more great content. All the best.